Good morning, mighty men. By 1858, the Layman's Prayer Revival had spread from Manhattan to New York, to Maine, California, Florida. Its impact went far beyond businessmen, affecting judges, college students, housewives, and more. Sometimes schools closed to pray and seek God. By May of 1858, the revival had spread uh, and swept New England and then westward and north into Canada. Few sermons were needed because as lay people witnessed, seekers flocked to the altar. There were an abundance of testimonies every night. Those who were converted were bold in sharing their newfound faith. People everywhere were talking about faith issues and about the Lord, and Christ became central in family life. For a period of about two years, there were about 50,000 converted every week, so that nationally, by 1860, a million converts had been added to American churches. The revival peaked in 1858, but didn't stop for years. Even during the Civil War, the military camps had some great revival meetings. There were over 150,000 converted in the Confederate Army alone. In his book, Great Revivals and the Great Republic, Warren A. Candler writes this. In the course of his narrative, Chaplain J. William Jones, a chaplain in the Army of Northern Virginia, shows how the most glorious revivals swept through whole regiments, brigades, divisions, corps, and the entire Army of Northern Virginia. Bishop John C. Keener of the Methodist Episcopal Church South testifies to similar conditions among the Confederate forces of the West. In a recent letter, he writes, Having been appointed superintendent of chaplains on the western side of the Mississippi, I know whereof I speak. Before and after an engagement, our campfires were the place of song and thanksgiving, and many were converted who still attest that God was with us." End quote. Well, from 1858 to 1860, the revival went international, moving to locations like England, Wales, Scotland, Ireland, South Africa, India, to name a few. So there were another million souls added to the million in the U.S. And the effects of this revival, which started as a small prayer meeting of seven in Manhattan, were felt for 40 years. That's what prayer and revival can do. Our Bible reading today is Luke chapters 22 and 23. I'm going to read uh, 22, verse 40. And when he came to the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not enter into temptation. And he, he withdrew from them about a stone's throw and knelt down and prayed, saying, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. And there appeared to him an angel from heaven, strengthening him. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat became like drops of blood falling down to the ground. And when he rose from prayer, he came to the disciples and found them sleeping for sorrow. And he said to them, Why are you sleeping? Rise and pray that you may not enter into temptation. Let's pray. Jesus, you are the ultimate example to us of prayer, consistency, urgency, prevailing prayer. You are the one we want to emulate. We will cry out to you for your will to be done and not ours. Lord, let us not be found sleeping when it is the hour of prayer. Let us not need to hear your words, why are you sleeping? Jesus, we are heeding your call to rise and pray that you may not enter into temptation. Lord, we say, raise up a million men who will awaken the dawn in prayer. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. If you like this video, hit that like button and subscribe, follow and share it. Shalom.